Hello friends, this is Jasu Bakuhatsu, and welcome back to Let's Play Ristar. So, yeah, here we are at, I guess, the, the next to last stage, technically, but really the last proper stage. Uh, and, yeah, this is actually, there, there are kind of a few points where the game kind of ramps up in difficulty a fair bit. I think the music level is a lot difficult, more difficult than the previous stages, and, uh, really this level also is a big big step up i think uh, from the previous levels in terms of just the overall difficulty but with that said this is actually isn't a terribly difficult game overall i think or at least for me these days when i've played it like a hundred times but uh, uh even then though just like sort of trying to view things from an objective standpoint i can't imagine that i'd have much difficulty with this game if I were coming at it somehow fresh for the first time with kind of all of the skills I've accrued now over the years of playing these types of games. If, if I could somehow like come at this game, if I could like mind wipe myself from having ever played this game and just come at it fresh, like right now with all my modern day gaming skills. I feel like I wouldn't have much difficulty with it. But with that said, as a kid, um, this was I, I was actually stuck at this level for a long time. Uh, not like a super long time. It, it was, yeah, a pretty super long time. It was like a good couple weeks, I think, of banging my head against uh, this final or next to last stage before I actually managed to get through it. But uh, again, just kind of little stories from about how this game sort of... And my experiences with this game from way back in the day. And yeah, here we've got, yeah, the, and of course, yeah, the next to last bonus stage as well, which weirdly enough happens to be one of the easiest. So I, I didn't, I forgot to talk about it in the previous video, but the the bonus stages in uh, the previous, in the previous world are actually a lot tougher uh, than, uh, or especially the second one is a lot tougher than any of the previous ones in the game. And as you can see, I was, I ran way lower on time with that last bonus stage than on any one previous. Whereas for some reason they like drop the difficulty way back down for this one though. Like I don't even see how it's possible for you to fail that bonus stage right there. There's like no challenge to it whatsoever. It's like weird. Oh yeah, by the way, I, I totally forgot to mention the, yeah, the gravity gimmick that you guys saw where it's, I mean, I say gravity gimmick, but it's basically exactly the same as uh, just swimming underwater. And yeah, the way that works is it's just, so, so you can think of it as sort of like an in invisible wa uh, invisible pool of water that's just kind of constantly lowering from the first time you enter it, which is a bit strange. And actually, that's one improve in improvement that they made for the North American version. For that segment, they actually added a little, just a, a nice little graphical detail where Ristar actually puts on a new pair of shoes once the anti-gravity segment starts up. So there's actually like, instead of just, oh, suddenly Ristar's in invisible water for some reason, like you saw earlier in this stage, in the North American version, it's like, oh, he's put on his anti-gravity shoes and that's why he's able to swim through seemingly nothing. And yeah, here we're, and yeah, here we are at the yeah, the final mini-boss, as it were, which is actually a bit more of a proper mini-boss than uh, a lot of the other ones we've seen. And th this is actually a pretty cool one. It's basically, yeah, a lot of the regular little booger enemies that I... <laughs> I, I don't know what they're actually called. They probably do have a proper name of some kind. I know, I know that uh, a lot of Japanese games like this tend to have a bunch of ridiculous names for their enemies. Oh, dang! It's really important to, to get that guy the first time he comes down, because, yeah, otherwise you got to sit through all this nonsense. And it, he comes down really fast, so he'll... Okay, that right there is actually a little bit of a trick... Kind of tricky timing to get that hit there. It's very easy to miss. This right here is kind of annoying, actually. This is, I guess, would be my other complaint. My other, like, tiny little complaint about the game is it's really, really hard to tell just what's in the foreground and what's in the background and what you can actually connect with just on that one particular attack. And so yeah, that's the second complaint that I have about this game. <laughs> one, the camera reminds me of other bad games with the same camera, and two, that one attack from that one mid-boss. Also, not so much of a complaint- oh, okay, enough about the game in general. This right here is actually a pretty cool level, I think. So yeah, uh, you've seen a, like a lot of really big, wide-open levels 
um, in the game so far, with a lot of different pathways through, which incidentally is just yet another thing that I like about games in general. I just love games with uh, big wide open levels with multiple paths. But uh, they, for this for this one bit of this level, they they actually change things up a lot. Instead of your big wide open levels, it's you're basically mo traveling from like these little little just from room to room through these teleporters, and it's like just kind of this. Basically, each room is its own little set piece with some kind of unique gimmick to it, or some puzzle or challenge to overcome. And it's like, like I was talking about how I really love big open levels, but uh, it I really love the way they place this here. Like right at the end of the game, it's just like you've gotten used to the way things were before, and suddenly they they change things up on you again, even more so than you're used to from previous levels. It's just uh, yeah, it's, and again, changing things up like that is just another thing that I love. In games like this, it's just, although okay, and that that kind of leads back into what I was about to talk about before, which is uh, weirdly enough, this game actually lacks one other element of games of this type that I tend to love. That was a awkwardly, awkwardly worded sentence. Um, a neat little mini boss here. You've got to hit this guy when he's got only one foot on the ground. So when he's like stepping forward towards you, you've got to hit him. I wasn't able to figure that out as a kid. I just like kept on ramming my head against him, and sometimes it would send him back, and sometimes it wouldn't. And I, I wasn't able to figure out what, what, what made him get sent back for a really long time. And yeah, you can see here we've got like almost kind of a puzzle here. I don't know why that stupid thing didn't. Okay, whatever. We'll get this one, or not. Okay, whatever. It came back. What? No, go the other way. You stupid. Oh my goodness. Okay, there we go. Man, it's embarrassing how much difficulty I had with that. Anyways, so yeah, another thing that I really like... Uh, uh, another common feature of uh, 2D platformers that I really like is uh, that games with uh, really really heavy physics. Like, games like your Sonic the Hedgehog, your Tomba, which I just played recently, with, like, re really weighty physics-based movement mechanics, and sp particularly jumping mechanics, which this game pretty much completely lacks. Like, you can see... Yeah, if you haven't noticed, Ristar jumps exactly the same height every single time, no matter how long you press the jump button for. Here I'm holding down the button, here I'm just tapping it quickly. There you have no variable jump height, uh, Ristar can pretty much stop and stop on a dime and move to full speed pretty much instantly. There's just like, there's no physics, no momentum or anything like that behind his movement. Which is not really so much of a criticism as an observation. Like I said, I, I tend to like those really weighty, kind of physics-based, physics-based movement in uh, 2D platformers. And uh, and yeah, I just thought that was kind of weird that this is like the one game, the one notable game that like doesn't happen, that doesn't have that. And yet I really, really like it anyways. And really, I don't think the game would benefit from that at all, in, in any case. It's like, you, you've got enough going on with the whole swinging, grappling, climbing mechanics anyways. It's just like, really, you don't really need like a complicated... You, you don't really need the regular movement to be like super complicated on top of that. It's like, we've got enough complexity just from the grabbing and swinging and whatnot, thank you very much. So it's like, it's kind of like they knew where to stop. It's like, okay, we've got this like really awesome just this really awesome basic grabbing mechanic. You could do a whole bunch of really cool things with it. We're gonna... So, all, all these creative obstacles that we have ideas for, and just like all this awesome stuff you can do with this one core mechanic. It's just... I've gotta stress, it's like really amazing how many cool things... Just how, how far they can... You'd think it's just like the simplest mechanic possible in video games. It's just like you have extendable arms that can grab onto things, but they've just done so much stuff with that mechanic. Oh, by the... Oh. I forgot to show off the idle animation in the previous level again, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't even remember what it is. Whatever. Just play the game for yourself if you want to see. Honestly, I do recommend this game a whole lot. Um, and actually, it, it's readily accessible as well. Uh, you can get this game on... Uh, it's on Steam, on like some kind of Sega collection, I think, although you can buy it individually as well. You can... I believe it's on Virtual Console. It's, it's on Gamer's Gate. Like, you can get... <laughs> Yeah, you can get it on PC, you can get it on Virtual Console, you can get it via emulation if you're into that. There's so many different ways you can play this game. Oh god, this this bonus stage, oh my goodness. So yeah, speaking of like, the way like, difficulty spikes, so yeah. Like the 
second bonus level of the previous world was sort of the first big, like, oh, this bonus stage is harder than the others. This one was absolutely insane for me a kid, as a kid. You really have to have, like, basically mastered the art of bashing your head against a wall repeatedly in order, in order to climb that wall. Uh, to beat this stage. And it's, it's not really a mechanic that's ever really required of you in just the regular game. Like, you never really need to climb a wall in that fashion, unless you're going after, like, kind of out-of-the-way hidden secrets. And I'm actually gonna fail this if I'm not careful. Okay, there we go. But yeah, it took me many, 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 many tries to beat this bonus stage as a kid. And in fact, I mentioned to you earlier how the, the stage... State World 2's first bonus stage was the last bonus stage that I ever found, though it wasn't the last one that I ever beat. I had still not beaten this final bonus stage. And yeah, that was the final bonus stage right there. And yeah, even by the time I found all the bonus stages, I still hadn't beaten this last one, because yeah, I was... And I, again, I, I and yeah, coming at the game now, it's, it just seems strange to me that I ever had so much difficulty with it, just because I've mastered the, that whole bash your head in the walls to climb it trick that I've... I, I've just bashed my head against those walls so many times, it's just like... It's like, yeah, there's nothing to it. Of course you can just climb a wall by bashing your head into it. There's nothing at all to it. Speaking of nothing at all to it, uh, this is probably the most basic boss in the game. There's like, there's no gimmick to this, or I guess... You, you smack your head into him. Yeah, again, with the, just smack your head into it over and over and over again. And uh, that's all there is to this fight. And once you smack him enough times with your with your face, then he falls down, and then you try to get the claw to fall on top of him. And then that's, a, that's all there is to this boss fight. It's like the simplest thing. And because you can just, like, chain... Like, chain headbutts off of him, and it's like, every time you headbutt, I haven't mentioned this before, but every time you headbutt, you get, like, just a little bit of inch, like, when you see him kind of, kind of somersaulting when he comes off the bounce. You get some invincibility frames during that, so basically, since you can spend the entire, the entirety of this boss fight just chaining head bonks off of him, you're basically invincible, like, the whole time. There is, this is literally the easiest boss in the game, like, even easier than the first one, I think. Anyways... And that's all there. Is. And oh, a neat little, tr a neat little visual gimmick for this thing too. You saw the evil dude. Is that was not greedy, by the way. We'll see greedy in the next stage. But yeah. And then you see. Anyways, he blasts off, and he's got. And then you get to see his little rocket ship here on the on the stage end screen with his with his little whatever his name is, dude, the boss dude in tow, which is just like really awesome. Anyways, sorry, talked over the end music as ever. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the final video. Don't miss it. Come on. <laughs> Sorry.